to go over uh, how to use calculus to determine the length of a curve. Normally we use integration to find like the area under a curve. But this time we're talking about just finding the distance from point A to point B on, a, on an equation. So what we have, for example, um, would be, if you take a look at this little graph that I've drawn here, so we split it up into what we call little partitions. See, that's where these dots are here. They split up into, it's a lot like how we calculate area in calculus, where we find the area of small rectangles that fit in and then start packing more and more rectangles than we know. You know, rectangles, the width times the height. So, in this case, we're just trying to find out what it does it measure? What's the distance from this point to this point, you see? Now, uh, the thing of it is, is that if you take a look at that, that that's a, if, if that would have been like a straight line, right? Then you could use the distance equation that's derived from, from the Pythagorean theorem, right? So, um, that in that in that case, what you have is you have a setup where, you know, this is a set of bunch of distances. Really, is what it is. From p naught to p one, you see it's a distance, and p naught p two, and then we're going to add them all up. So we have an equation right here where I want to prove this thing right here, where it says l is equal to the integration of from a to b. Here's a, and here's b. And then 1 plus the derivative of f prime of x squared dx. Now that's supposed to give you the distance, believe it or not. So the way to think about it is that since we have these partitions, so we're going to take the absolute value, you see, of the distance between pi minus 1 and, and pi. So if we just take one particular spot, we'll have, um, this would be, for example, pi. You can't see it, but that would be um, P X of I right and all that means is that X of I partition and then we'll subtract it from the one before the one before is X I minus one see it so what we have to do is we're going to find the limit from I equals one you see the I here and here by the way this is absolute value so that we're talking about the distance between P I one and P I that's what that stands for. So uh, let's get back to this black guy here so I can get back to the... Okay, there we go. All right. So then we're going to add up all the partitions, you see, from I equals 1. If you put 1 into I, you're going to get this P of 0, see it? And then the next one will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what is this N business going to infinity? That means as you increase the number of partitions then you'll have more partitions to add up. So n can grow as n pass to infinity. If you keep that up, then we have the, uh, the distance between, you see the distance between one, one section, between pi minus one and pi, is the distance equation we're used to seeing, which is the square root of xi, here's xi, minus xi one, squared plus yi minus yi squared, right? And that distance formula, as you know, is just derived from, really, from Pythagorean theorem. So, if you take a look at what is another way of looking at xi minus xi minus 1, why, that's simply a little change in x of i. That's what I'll put here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Here's a little change of x of i, see it? And there's a little change of y. So, we know something called the mean value theorem that we've gone over before which is important, and saying if this is a secant, a secant, let's call this little line segment a secant, that that has a slope, right? That's the rise over the run. And it says uh, that there's some x of i, you notice I have an asterisk here, an x of i, that, that's between p of i minus 1 and p of i. So remember, think of this as just one section here, like this guy right here, see it? And that's right here. See it? Let me go back over here. Okay. So, what this saying is that if you have a P, an X of I here, 
and uh, x of i minus 1 here. So we'll call this x of i minus 1. Okay, so so we can call this for now, let's just call this a instead of calling it a, we'll call it x hat and instead of calling it b, because we're only talking about one segment of the whole curve, one partition of the whole curve. Do you see it? So it's saying that I can find an x of i asterisk such that the slope of this secant will also be equal to the tangent line. You see? So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? You can see that if you have a tangent line here, that's going to be positive, and then at some point it's going to have a negative slope. So it must go through the whole range of slopes from negative to positive, and one of them will be the same slope as this secant. If that's the case, then we know that the derivative uh, of evaluated x of i asterisk is equal to the rise over the run, which is simply f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 times x of i minus x i minus 1. That's due to the to the mean value theorem. Now, basically, what I'm going to do over here is simply I'm, I'm just going to solve for... I'm going to get over here. I'm going to solve for... You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to multiply both sides by x of i. So now, what happens is that you can think of f of x i minus f of x i as a change in delta y, right? And here's the derivative of x of i asterisk minus, and we can call this thing a little delta x of i. See it? So we can write this as the partition. This is, remember, just one one slice from here to here. Then we have to add them all up. So from here to here, you can see that we have delta y is equal to the derivative evaluated at that special point x of i prime. Remember, so it's equal to the to the slope of the secant times delta x of i, right? Because that's what this is, a delta x of i. Now I plug it into the distance formula, and I have delta x sub i really squared, and then delta y sub i squared, okay? And um, now, now I know another way of saying delta y is this. Do you see it? I, I ri I'm going to take this delta y like this, see? And I'll take it, and I'll plug it into the delta y in here, see? When I do that, I'll have it right here, see? That is that term. So, um, if I have this, um, you can see that um, I can factor out a delta x of i squared, because I have it here, and I have it right here, too. So, if I subtract it out, there it is. I mean, factor it out. Now, we're going to start building up to what we want to prove, right? So what happens now, we're going to add up all those little partitions. So we're going to take the summation of all the partitions from i equals 1 to n, but we're going to let n go to infinity, so keep adding more and more teeny, teeny partitions until when we add them all up, we have a perfect fit of the total distance along a curve, right? A distance with a straight line um, is easy, right? That's just the Pythagorean theorem. You can always make a rise over run and do this and, make a, and, and figure out. The, the distance between two points on a straight line. But when it's a curve, and it's a little more difficult, so we need calculus. So if we do that, then now take the limit, okay, so that the limit, uh, as n goes to infinity from the summation of i equals 1 to n of 1 plus um, x of i, remember that's squared, and then times delta x. Now here's the magic, as you know, with integral calculus. As the n goes off to infinity, that means we're packing more and more little teeny and smaller and smaller partitions in there and adding them up. That's where it changes from discrete, right? These are discrete packages to this, that's the integration curve from a to b. So what I got is a to b is equal to square root of 1 times f of i x squared dx, which, which is pretty much, you know, what we wanted to show. This is the same thing as that f prime of x is the same as dy dx. You see that? So what we'll do now is an example. Let me show you. So I have y squared, uh, y squared equals x cubed. So if I want to get the y by itself, I'll take the square root of both sides. But the square root, you know that the square root of x 
right? Just to remind you, you should know by now that the square root of x, hmm, right? And the square root of x, just to refresh your memory, is the same as x to the half power. And that's why it's y to the 3 half. So now I'll take the derivative dy dx so that that's going to be uh, 1 half. So bring it down, subtract 1. So that's dy dx. So now I know what goes into here. You see? That's what goes into here. I'll put it like that. Yeah, and so when I do that, we want to find the length along this uh, a curve from 1, 1 to 4, 8. So I know since the x values are going from 1 to 4, then my limits will go from 1 to 4. And now, remember, now I'm going to have to square this value right here. When I square it, the square of a half power just leaves me x to the 1 power, right? But when I square three halves, I'm going to get the 9 fourths dx. Okay. Now we'll use substitution to solve this integral. So we'll let u equal the inside of this stuff right in here. All right. And I'll take du dx. And then I'm going to solve for dx. So you can see that I have du dx. Now I'm going to flip both sides. So I have dx du. Then I'll multiply both sides to u, so now I have a term to replace dx. Okay, so now um, I have to figure out what my new limits are here because um, w we've switched over to u. So uh, this is du right here. Okay, so you can see that the four ninths can come out because it's a constant. And now I'm going to take the integral of u to the one half power. So that's u to the 2 thirds times 4 ninths. And then how do I get this guy here? Well, let me go back up here. So if I take a look at this guy right here, right? So now in order to find my new limits, I take my old limits. Remember that was going from, uh, well, initially it was going from 1 to, remember the question was uh, I had to go from 1, 1, 1. Let's put it right here. So uh, we got one one. Yeah, these are the two points. So initially, if I was doing it in terms of f of x, uh, so that I had something like, you know, the square root of one plus f prime of x, that quantity squared, and dx. That doesn't look very good. But anyway, I, I don't need that at all because I got it right here. You see it? I got it right here. <coughs> but because I did the substitution for u, my limits a and b, which originally was 1 to 4, right, will change. So now that I let u equal this, right, so I'm going to let u equal this. So now in order to get the new limits, I'm going to plug in 1 for the lower limit. So 1 plus 9 fourths, you see that? So if I do that, that'll give me a, uh, this upper a 2 thirds for a lower limit. Because I'm going to have, when x is equal to 1, I'll have 1 plus 9 fourths. Alright, and that's going to be the same as, uh, you're going to have uh, 4 ninths plus 9 fourths. All right, so we're going to have uh, 13 fourths, does that look like about right? So then the lower limit would be, um, make sure I got that right, because I have, I let u equal this, and then my lower level is 1, so now I have 1 plus 9 fourths, which would be 13 fourths, so I guess I got this guy wrong. <coughs> so this guy... To be written as 13 fourths. Mm. Okay, and then um, so here I'm showing the work here. So I put um, one. Uh, so u is equal to aha. Uh, now I, I use equal to this. So I, I made a, this right here is 
not the case. So I'm just trying to find out what my U's are, my new upper and lower limits, right? So since U is was we let it equal one plus nine fourths times X. <coughs> so in order to get my new limit that goes here and here, I take my original limit that we're going from one to four, and I just plugged one in there for the what we call the lower the lower limit, which is going to be one plus. Remember, x is one, so that's just nine fourths. That's where I got the thirteen fourths. Now for the upper limit, so we call it up the upper. Let's call it the upper. That'll be one plus nine fourth x but instead of x now i'll put what it w went up to remember it went to uh, from one to four so now this is four right but four divides out so then we have this guy which is going to be 10 so the cup guy is going to be 10. okay so let's put that in so it's going to be 10. i'll put it in right here there so now we have the whole thing and we're ready to do it. So what we have is we can evaluate. Let's start from here. I got the four ninths, right? That's from here. And then I have the two, two thirds. So two thirds. And then I have you that I'll evaluate at, at, at that'll be 10 to the three halves power, right? And then I'll be minus the whole thing evaluated a lower thing and that's going to be um uh, and now be careful because this thing when i plug it in there oh yeah that's right and then the lower one will be uh 13 two-thirds and then i'll have uh 13 fourths right evaluate um to the three halves okay and that should be the answer so um Anyway, that's just the number wise, but that will give you the length along some curve from A to B. Isn't that cool? Just by adding up partitions. Okay, uh, let me just quickly show you so that so you can see what I mean with regards to if it were just not a curve but a straight line, just so that you, uh, I'm sure you recall, but let me uh, let me show you just to make sure. If the curve had been just simply a straight line, well, life would be a lot easier, right? Because we know we have a constant slope. So in this case, if we have some kind of point here where we have A to B, right? And this would be Y and capital X, let's say. So we can see that, well, um, if we can think of this as some, there's some X and X and Y. So if I want to find the slope of that, I know that this point right here, right, is just simply B, comma, F of B. If we call this the function of F of this graph is the function of F of X. See it? And this one over here will be A, comma, F of A. But we'll have a hybrid point right here. And that hybrid point is going to be equal to well, it's going to be equal to B, comma, F of A. It's kind of a hybrid between the two points. So knowing that, I can take this and call this the rise, and I can call this the run, right? Our idea is to find this distance here, but I know that this is the right thing. So now I can try to think about, well, let's see if we can find the distance between here, from here to here. Well, it's very easy because we have a straight line. The slope is the same everywhere, right? So just using Pythagorean theorem, I know that d squared is going to be equal to, well, that's going to be um, f of a, right? f of b, see it? Let me put it like this. So that's going to be equal to f of b minus f of a, right? And then that's going to be uh, b minus a that's that's the slope you, you see and uh, so um if i want to find the distance well uh then i simply just take 
I'm trying to find the, the square of that, right? So I've d squared. So now if I want just a distance, let's see. So that let's see. Wait, before I do that, hold on. I just I just went off the course here. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find the distance. So I know that d squared is going to be equal to let's put it over here. Is going to be equal to f of b minus f of a quantity squared right plus and then over here we're going to have uh, b right minus a that quantity squared and then the distance with square root it will be equal to that f of b No, that's not too good. Let me go back. Oh, f of b. Um, f of b minus f of a. Squared and then plus b minus a squared. So, yep, yeah, now that's my distance. See how easy it was? Now, we didn't have to use calculus because it's a straight line. If, however, I change my curve to this, now it's not so easy to find the distance from here to here, is it? And that's why we split it up into partitions, some little partitions to be added it up. So that's basically where, where a difference comes from. Okay, thanks.